This episode of the podcast is supported by Audible. You can download and listen to the world's best storytelling. I use it all the time to and from work. You can listen to audiobooks, original series and more on their free app. To get your free 30-day subscription, which includes a free book, click on the link in our show notes and enjoy. Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. Today I was joined by George Rawlings, who is co-founder of a really cool dating app called Honeypot. Really interesting concept built around micro dating. So we hear about how he started the business and raising cash, the idea behind it in quite a crowded market. They seem to be doing some amazing things to really stand out. Uh, you might have seen a lot of their guerrilla marketing activities around London. And so it's really cool to see someone innovating and doing things a bit different. I hope you enjoy the conversation. Hey, it's Lewis. Welcome to the podcast. Enjoy our conversations anytime, anywhere. Boom, and we're live. Wicked. George, thanks for coming in. Thank you very much for having me. How are you doing? I'm very well, yes. Good. Awesome to be here. So you braved it over walking over from Elephant and Castle. Indeed. It uh, wasn't far. Um, yeah, Elephant Castle. So you been there well? Well... Since January, it's an absolute hellhole, but uh, I'm in a new build there, so it's all right. <laughs> it's a lot, there's loads of development going on there. Definitely. It's a good spot. It is, apart from the roundabout, it's it's pretty nasty. But hey, it's it, oh, well. it's nice. Most of these roundabouts are being like taken down. <laughs> it, it is, so Elephant Castle Roundabout is actually the busiest roundabout and the most dangerous roundabout in, in the UK. All oh, right. A bit of a fact. They need to change start. that. Yeah, yeah, I know. change that. It's crazy. So, Honeypot. Yes. How did you, I guess, what's your, what's well, your story? It, How did you get involved? How did you do it? So it's a dating app, and I thought the the most efficient way to find a girlfriend is make your own app. So... Uh, just to, like, get yourself a girlfriend? Oh, absolutely, yeah. completely. Me and my co-founder, we were, we had our frustrations with current apps. We found it very boring. It lacked spontaneity. It wasn't exciting. I thought the whole thing of the small talk when you match with someone and the chances of actually meeting that match is so low now. What is it that we can do Meeting as in... Actually going on a first physical date. Physical date. Correct. Right, right. And we realised, you know... People are just now swiping for the sake of it. We've got so much choice on the apps um, that it's it's affecting our ability to actually meet people because we've got information overload. So we always think that there might be one person who could be better just one swipe away. So how do we make something that is a platform that allows you to effectively date on your terms? And when I say that, I mean, when you I want a dating app, this is where we're getting to and what we're building, which we've, we've made a start at it, yeah. is you use the app when you're available to meet instead of, you know, sitting there at home, swiping on the sofa and just getting a bit of an ego boost when you get a match. It's a, it's an actual app if you want to meet people. Do you want to meet someone? I want to have a date right now. Correct, yeah. See who's around. Yeah, exactly. See who's av- available. By limiting the choice, the people in that area, which we call a honeypot, it helps people make a decision because the choice is limited. By actually having thousands of profiles of potential matches that you wouldn't meet, it yeah. hinders our ability to meet. So, like, not too dissimilar from back in the day. Exactly. Like, at a bar, a yeah. few girls or guys around, yeah. mm-hmm. but you haven't got the confidence to go and chat to them. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So, the way it works is it's very much, you know, we've broken up London into different boroughs, and the borough is the honeypot, so it's visualised on a map. It's a predetermined area by us, um, where if you're inside the honeypot, you see who's also in the honeypot. Oh, so you have one... You, no, one we don't have one. We've currently we've got about 50 honeypots in London. Oh, wow. So if you're not inside a honeypot, the app won't work. So you oh. only see people who are inside the honeypot as well. Ah. So how big's the honeypots? Uh, a borough size. A borough, okay. Yeah, a borough. So it could be in Camden, yeah, for example. Exactly, exactly. Fine, yeah. fine. So that's kind of the idea of it. Cool, cool. And then what were you using before then? So you were in London trying to find a girlfriend, swiping, yeah. not getting any matches. Yeah, well, we, yeah. we were on um, we were on Bumble, Hinge, Hinge, Tinder, that I've actually been banned from them all now because I've been using them for getting through <laughs> to my potential market. Um, yes, I'm not allowed to use them. Uh, and it was just, I just, it's a hard graft. You know, also pressure. I really believe um, dating, there's a stigma around that first date where it's very formal. The whole point of what we're trying to do is deformalize dating through this concept that we've effectively pioneered called micro dating. Micro date is basically a short, sharp, supercharged date. Could be a half an hour coffee with someone in your lunch break, yeah. a quick 40 minute beer after work with someone new, a walk around a museum for 15 minutes with someone to see if you know literally within t- in two minutes if you've got a spark with that person. Yeah, yeah. Why yeah. do we need to give up a whole evening, make it really formal? 
and you know you tell your housemates or your friends you're going on a date it's all oh I'm now on going on a, a oh you're on a date tell me how the date goes I just want to be much more chilled oh I'm just meeting someone it's just a micro date and that's a hashtag we're interesting into branding it's just and a how's micro-date. that how's that working good yeah yeah we've, you know we've only been live now for oh gosh uh, three months we have been doing it in a very unusual way to spread the message which we'll go on to in a bit yeah 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 just to hit ten thousand downloads now amazing um, that's really good off a marketing budget of about three hundred quid nice <laughs> yeah. Nice. So we, nice. we haven't done any paid yet at all. We're just Hold out. Yeah, Hold just out. holding out for all that. Yeah. But yeah, it's, then, it, we've had that, lots of people reporting the meetups that they've, you know, been on dates on their lunch breaks and everything like that. So yeah. it's all going the right so direction. So the micro-dating thing's really taking off. For where we got to in three months, yeah. what's for us is, yes, we're selling an, a new app and it's a very saturated market anyway, but it's also a new concept for people where we need to educate people that it's okay to micro-date. It's a, yeah. it's a new... It's not speed dating because speed dating is literally a minute in front of someone it's just a term and a way of thinking about dating that's a lot more chilled we have to be like really on your game first impressions you need yeah. to be like well the thing is on fire. I mean it's a it's a dating app that actually if you uh, if you don't if, if you don't feel that spark you've got an excuse to be like well piss off <laughs> <laughs> if that makes sense yeah yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Crazy, crazy. When I was, I mean, it made me sound really old now, but anyway, the dating apps had just started mm-hmm. when I was dating. Mm-hmm. But I met my uh, girlfriend, now wife, when I was 27. Okay. Uh, I think. How old are you now? If you don't mind me asking. Um, I'm 38. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I know, I don't look it. Look I'm like looking my age. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How old are you now? I'm 20, 27. 27. Fine, yeah. So I met my girlfriend about, well, like 11, 12 years ago. Mm-hmm. And then my sister set us up okay. on a blind date. Yes. And then we went on a blind date. It was the best day of her life, obviously. And then, you know, of course. Went from Where, that, what, but... what was the date? <laughs> what was it? Do you know, the funny thing is, firstly, I called her. Okay. And n- nowadays, you find like people aren't really, no. like, it's a bit weird. Yeah. Anyway, I called her. I was like, hey, my sister told me to call you. So I've called you. Um, g- give me a call back. It wasn't so smooth. She called me back. We went out to Camden, okay. uh, to the Lock Tavern. Okay. Not you know, Lock Tavern it. opposite no. Camden Market? Uh, yes, okay. So I was like living in Camden at the time. Uh-huh. And then we had to had a, a few drinks mm-hmm. and then another day and and so forth. Great. Which is cool. Nowadays, though, it's different, right? It is. Like a friend of mine, he's my age, single. And when he hit 30, I mean, he was having like a different girl every night. Yeah. There's so much choice. Yes, exactly. And so now I think it's hard for him to actually have like give someone time to have a meaningful relationship yes because you can just he now has that, to delete all the apps yeah that's the um, that is the issue with it you know we've got devices at our fingertips that are facilitate connections like that and a relationships all about as you said putting the time in someone giving someone the time of day and that's where also our concept of our app is that's we want people to get more face to face and give someone the time of day you match with someone you bloody well meet them to see if yeah. you've got a spark with them you know what's the point of matching with someone you don't actually meet them you both said you were attracted to each other and dating always starts with a degree of physical attraction yeah, yeah. get face to face and yeah, if yeah. they're in your vicinity and available right now why the hell wouldn't you meet them? No, it's good. I like that because if you're if you, if it's not that way, if it's another dating app, you're messaging, yeah. you're chatting. You might you, you, you might can, not. You can I mean, talk about and... you know what films you both like on you know when you meet in person. You don't want to hear that on a dating app. It's boring. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's true. It's true. Yeah. Interesting. So you've got so you've got ten thousand people yeah. like downloads and mm-hmm. then active users. Uh, probably about five thousand, about half. Some have downloaded. Yeah, some have downloaded outside London. It simply won't work. And the thing is, we're we're still so early on. We've had bugs massive bugs that have been affecting us a bit on notifications and messaging stuff yeah, yeah, classic yeah. it happens with tech there's always going to be yeah, issues yeah. and niggles um but we've got a great feature coming out that's going to sort of supercharge everything which is a story feature oh, oh so, nice. yeah within, talking about that yeah before. exactly so within the app you can actually record a quick video or, or you're with your friends in a bar saying hey just chilling out anyone come join us it appears <laughs> posted two minutes ago you see oh okay they're available let's go chill with them you can Love group that. up and stuff so Love. so that's going to make it a lot more real time and visual um, yeah. Especially with the profiles, dating, you know, dating app profiles, people just choose their best pictures, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and which is a good thing to do because you want to look good. But people use heavily filtered pictures. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. you see someone with bloody dog ears. I mean, do you look like that? No, <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Um, so it's just going to make it very raw. Uh, yeah, and the, yeah. the point is we're not allowing anyone to have any filters or any stickers or anything like on the story. It's just as you are, yeah. raw, raw. Right Love now, it. the real you. Love it. How did you get into all this? So you're 27. What did 27, you do before? Before, my first startup was a video communication tool that allowed businesses to sort of send video email to each other. Cool. Yeah. So this is straight after... Yeah, straight after I dropped out of university. <laughs> I was there at Birmingham doing geography. And I was also at Birmingham. Were you actually? Yeah. 
Okay. Although obviously, like ten years. Yeah. Amazing. You, <laughs> yeah. What? What? Uh, did you when you were in first year? Were you on the Vale? I was in. Uh, I was in a place called Griffin Close, which okay. was just past Selly Oak, which yeah. got knocked down the year okay, left. Okay. Okay. And then yeah, like the Vale was there. Nice. Although all the buildings are new now. Yeah, of course. I, I was, was in tennis courts. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not mates there. Yeah. I was there from ninety nine to two thousand and three. Okay. Yeah. I think I was there <laughs> 2011 or 12. Cool. Eight, nine, it's a good two. city. It is, yeah. I mean, you have to branch out and explore it because Selly Oak is grim. Yeah, yeah, it's completely yeah, good. Yeah. But all the students are there, yeah. so it's pretty fun. Yeah. Um, mm. The actual city has impro- well, improved mm. a lot. Mm. I mean, it was really crap when I mm. first went there. It's had and a lot of like, um, regeneration on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was dropped out of uni, started that. Just And when I say started it, I white labeled someone else's software and resold that to state agents, schools. Um, a few recruitment agents but the, the thing it wasn't my own software and like the IP and the value of the company wasn't in me it was with BombBomb who uh, were the technology providers over in the States yeah. and I merged the clients back with them okay. and then came away and then came up with this idea fine so did you always want to be an entrepreneur do your own thing no not really accidental (laughs) came out of uni and was like well okay i need to make some money (laughs) um i've not you know set out i want to be an entrepreneur and it's it's all very glamorous this idea of being an entrepreneur but this is where i am and i'm loving it i absolutely love what i do um especially now i'm in the business of love and dating yeah, and yeah, connecting yeah. people I, I'm fascinated by it so uh, how did you find so you said you have a co-founder correct yeah yeah so how did how so did my best fr- he's my best friend's brother cool so I've known him for a long time actually awesome. at school together he's a couple of years older than me yeah. he's 29 and we were on a skiing holiday one time and we just were in the car back from Gatwick talking about ideas and then this sort of this sort of blossomed into nice. what it is now but it, weirdly it wasn't Honeypot when we came up with this idea wasn't as it is now it was actually all about events so we were saying there's a honeypot on at this bar between 8 and 10 go there if you're single not speed dating event we don't rent out the bar we're just pushing anonymous just people connected yeah people exactly to, to try to put them in the same bar at the same time at the same place um, but we had problems of well I don't know who's here because of the honeypot and how do I break the ice with other people I'm too scared to go say hi <laughs> people were just in their friendship groups sort of and it was all a bit basically speed dating but a lot shitter yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, it and just you, wasn't did you do a few events yeah 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 we, we did, did loads like, we did I mean some hardly anyone rocked up and it was just me and my, Matt was, me and my co-founder was like you're right mate you're single I am yeah I'm single <laughs> it was all a bit awkward but there were a few that went well in Clapham and we were starting to move people a, a little bit we did a few in Fulham yeah and um, we were starting to to move people to different locations but the problem we had you know people didn't know who was there because of Honeypot yeah yeah we were very much anti-dating app uh, and we went full circle and oh okay fine yeah it, so it, was to, like yeah, yeah, it was all about ditch the dating app right, so we realised right. oh shit we need a work, Live put, stuff. we need yeah. a way to connect people who are at the same venue so then the honeypot became the bar the coffee shop the cafe and okay. uh that's where we started to we did a, a crowdfunding round last year to get this all off oh, the ground yes nice. correct with uh crowdcube cool how did you um, find that experience then? great actually i mean i when we had the idea of the honeypot being the bar the coffee shop the venue which is not what it is now we thought right because we need an app we're not technical enough where we can develop this from scratch we need to get a team on board to help us with this right we don't have any money we need to raise money for this Right, we don't have any traction, we don't have a prototype or anything. No funds, no investors will really look at us of yeah. where we're at. It's an idea and an idea is worth, you know, nothing really. But we managed to value an idea at half a million quid. Wow. Put a valuation <laughs> of, of a, yeah, put a valuation of half a million quid on uh, a landing page, an idea <laughs> and just a massive ego probably. And people bought into it? Correct. We managed to line up about 75% of the round of just friends. And you're raising for it? For how much? Uh, we raised 120k. Awesome, nice. Yeah. How long did it take? Four days. Four days? About that. That's crazy. Yeah. That's so easy. Yeah, so we, we had money committed before of people saying, yep, I'm in, okay, I want it. And we just went, right, let's get on this, let's do it. Mad. Um, That's crazy. It just, I think it just shows if people have got an idea, as long, you know, a pre, it was a pre-seed round, and at pre-seed, people are buying into the entrepreneur. People, and then Fine. at seed, so you they're literally had like team. Literally had... Nothing, we, just the idea. Correct. Yeah. yeah, and we we had you know we we told them about our concept and our project of trying to move singles, and we had a bit of a community behind me. Yeah. It wasn't really anything valuable, um, but I think it just shows if someone does have an idea, they can go out and get people that their own network. That's why I think networking is so key. Yeah, um, not just to to milk people for their money, but <laughs> just who people can put you in touch with. Yeah, because as I said, that pre-seed round is people buying into the entrepreneur, and if people believe in you. 
sometimes it doesn't really matter about the product. It's, True. You know, do, you, do you see my point? No, no. I mean, yeah. To be honest, I mean, you can have an average idea. I mean, a company ultimately is made up of the people. Mm-hmm. And you can do something quite average, yeah. but a bit better than the competition. Absolutely. Have a great team and kill it. Totally. An amazing idea with the wrong people and it just doesn't work. Yes. Yeah. Um, no, no, so you're right. Yeah, you're right. so that's... Um, so you've got 75 shareholders. No, got 119 shareholders. 119 yes, shareholders. correct. For just from that round. We did another. So uh, when I said we, we, we lined up 75% of oh, the sorry. round before we went sorry. live on Crowdcube to their registered investors. Right, right. So we, we went out to our network, our friends, um, and people, friends of friends, and then we had a few 15Kers, 10Kers, a couple of 20Kers, and then we just went out, minimum investment was 10 quid, and just went out massively to our own network. Crazy. So get pretty serious when people have given you money. Oh, it does, yeah. You do feel the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> you really do feel the pressure. But I think we've got something. I really, I totally believe in what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we, we are putting everything on the line to try and make this work. And of course, yeah. when being a tech company and you raise 120K, runway's not huge. Yeah, it's yeah. really not. You know, development's extremely expensive. Um, so we're now sort of looking at the next round to take yeah. this to the next level. But to bridge the gap between um, the last round and closing on the next round, so obviously there's a bit of time where it's like, oh, things are a bit tight. Yeah, yeah. So when I say putting everything on the line, I'm selling my flat in Cheltenham. I need, I'm going to support this whole thing yeah, yeah, just to keep yeah. this going. Because I, th- I think we're making ground, as I said, three months in, and we're, we're starting to do some damage. And when I say damage, in terms of the marketing, we've done some damage, which you may have seen. So I saw she did some guerrilla marketing. <laughs> yes, correct. So tell me about uh, how's that how Well, we just thought, out? well, we can't afford to... to Pay Facebook, Instagram, do it the usual way, um, where it's, you know, you're just dumping money on ads. Everyone's doing yeah. that. And our competitors right now are doing exactly that. They've got much deeper pockets than us. Uh, and also their apps are a lot better than us. We have to get people to buy into us and personalize our brand to begin with. We've very much put the people as entrepreneurs behind the brand to start with um, and been sort of personalities about, about it. Yeah. So weirdly, with not having money to to do the usual route, it was a bit of a blessing in disguise because it's allowed us to sort of reinvent ourselves, be completely unconventional and do something completely different. Nice. So we've gone gorilla with everything we've done. And I've always liked the idea of just a simple classroom size whiteboard. Yeah. Um, so we bought one on Amazon, wrote a message out saying, left it outside Waterloo Station, and it said, download Honeypot, London's new dating app. We didn't get a single download. I think we got Nothing. one download. <laughs> but of course, with a dating app, it takes two to tango. So it was a bit of a waste That's of time. <laughs> so it was a bit of well, a waste of time. two of you on there, really. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, I think there was one, like, one download from it. So we thought, right, back to the drawing board. Let's tell a story here and re- try to do something that's just uh, get people, get a reaction out of people, create drama. So we, yeah, yeah. we wrote the message. The first whiteboard we did, we left this outside Liverpool Street Station, six o'clock in the morning. It said, to my cheating ex-boyfriend, don't bother coming home tonight. Enjoy seeing this on Instagram the same way I saw you and that girlfriend. P.S. You're deluded if you think Honeypot's the next hinge. People... <laughs> went everyone was stopping to really? take a picture really? they would walk past and go you're joking angry girlfriend shamed a boyfriend stole an office whiteboard this is gold <laughs> got out the phone picture it went absolutely ballistic amazing, amazing. Um, within a few you know within about half an hour we had all our friends saying this has popped up in my whatsapp group I'm so sorry George I'm so sorry it's like no I'm in on this okay <laughs> this is what we've done we've logged this damn whiteboard to get brilliant, this here brilliant. and in terms of the marketing behind that, it's the first thing. So this was, was like in the morning. Yeah, yeah, morning. Everyone's come yeah, to the train. Exactly. So on the whiteboard, my Instagram was tagged George Rawling. So people thought, right? So they thought you were the yeah, cheating boy. Exactly. Boyfriend. Cheeky. So yeah. people, we were driving all the traffic. It's like shame this person, shame this person. Getting the tags in, getting the people messaging me like, you're a horrible <laughs> human. Like, uh, and people were checking me out. So they went to my profile and then they saw the first post. It said, read. Uh, my bio said, read my. Uh, read my latest post and my cheating will make sense went on post and it said what you saw wasn't real I put up the whiteboard I had to get your attention without paying an expensive Instagram influencer Um, uh, download honeypot is totally different to anything else just like our marketing amazing people liked it but in terms of the board it was the singling out the guy the subtle trigger of association of uh, enjoy seeing this on Instagram to prompt people to put it on Instagram and the PS you're deluded deluded if you think honeypot's the next hinge of course people who know what Hinge is, they're now making that association with Honeypot being a dating app. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Side by side Love Hinge. that. That's great. 
Uh, and it's, yeah, so it worked really, really well. And you really got some good downloads. From oh, that. yeah. So we've done about five or six of them. Did you um, sell in Oxford Street as well recently? Uh, yes, we, we've, yeah, we've done. You're just doing it all over? Yeah, so th- we've done two cheating campaigns. And I know it's not <laughs> the best. Cheating. I know it's not the best as a dating app, the best reflection on the brand to begin with. But right now, we don't have an established brand. We're just two guys in London trying to spread the word about a dating app. You know, there is no real. Oh, we've got to protect the brand. We're just yeah. doing it in a such an unusual way. Unfortunately, more people are interested in exactly. like cheating stories exactly. than uh, my boyfriend's the best boyfriend. So, yeah. what I then thought, okay, let's um, let's not just do a whiteboard. Let's take this to the next level and actually put a human in it. So I strapped myself up with cardboard and wrote, "I cheated on my girlfriend, and this is my punishment." <laughs> P.S. Do not download Honeypot. And I stood outside Fenchurch Street, actually, for the whole day. Um, and that was another one that went ballistic. And classic red button theory when it says, do Did not press... Did anyone come yeah, up to you? Yeah, well, it was, do not press the red button on P.S. Do not download Honeypot. Everyone was like, well, what is this? <laughs> I'll download it. So, uh, oh, I got spat out that day. I, oh, I had all the cabbies sort of driving past. <laughs> I hope you was worth it, love! <laughs> Just like, all right, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. Any women stop? <laughs> mm. Well, I, a few people were like, this this is not good, but fair play, mate. You know, you've done a good stint there. I walk past yeah. you first thing in the morning. Yeah. Here's yeah, my card, yeah. give me a call later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, so the next thing we did, I mean, as I said, we've done lots of them, but we'll, we'll cover sort of the three ones we've done. Did the first board outside Liverpool Street, then Fenchurch Street with the cardboard. And then we thought, well, how do we, we're getting all this digital engagement of people taking pictures and tagging. How do we get real life engagement combined with digital engagement? So we bought table and chairs and popped that outside Tottenham Court Road with a blackboard that said, I got dumped, um, now single and ready to date again, quite literally, got five minutes, hashtag microdating, take a seat. <laughs> there was a, some flowers on the table, cups of coffee. <laughs> Can anyone sit down? I had 91 dates that day. 91? 91 dates Jesus. in one day. Yeah. Wow. I'm surprised you didn't see it on LinkedIn. I'm actually a bit offended you didn't Why did see it on LinkedIn. Why did I see that? Why did I see that? I don't know what's going on. Yeah. I've been working too no, hard. No, no, for sure. Um, 91 so, dates? Yeah, ni- so people would... Uh, wow. Yeah. So people um, were sitting down. And Is I, there a picture of it on LinkedIn? Would you yeah, we'll stick yeah, it in the yeah, show yeah, notes? Yeah, sure, stick that's it in the fine. show notes. Um, so <laughs> people were sort of sitting down and actually thinking, yeah, okay, cool, well, let's just have a date now. And I, I was in black tie as well. In black tie. Um, guys and, and girls? A few guys. Well, <laughs> I'm straight myself, but a few guys did sit down. And even when the girls sat down, I did say to them, look, thank you for sitting down. Can I explain this to you? You know, this is a marketing of our app um, of... of Okay, right. Yeah, so I explained that this was a, a bit of a PR stunt, and they, they liked in it. In case they got too excited. Um, exactly. Like, yeah. But for me, that was a, probably our cleverest one, because it was a true representation of everything our app wanted to do, but it was just in real life. That's really good. And it had a nice positive spin behind it without, without you know, labelling me as London's biggest cheater. Yeah, yeah. that's brilliant. Thank that's you. Brilliant. Thank what's, you. So what's like the age range, then, of people on... It, it's... Our market at the moment is probably, we thought it was going to be sort of 20 to 30. It's probably 24 to 34. All right. A um, bit older. So a little bit older than I thought. Um, tw- yeah, 24 to 34. Uh, and in terms of our ratio right now, I think it's sort of 65, 35. We need to... What, guys? Yeah. It's always hard on a dating app to get more women on it. Really? Yeah. It's, How come? Yeah, it just guys are more willing just to download just to try and just to try it and it also it's quite an it's quite a bold concept you know you're available you meet someone quite spontaneously and yeah, you've got that, to be in the right mindset exactly exactly and i think yeah. and you know there's been people that have said to me before when i've explained it okay so it's a hookabout it's like well no if you're using it at 11 o'clock in the morning not really but if you're using it at 11 o'clock at night maybe but oh, people yeah, use dating yeah. apps for, for, for hookups anyway but yeah, you yeah, just yeah. got to be you honest know with your who... intentions yeah yeah I mean you've got to get a response and stuff exactly yeah. so what's it been like like founding your company is it what you thought three yeah. months in it's exciting every day's a different challenge um, but at this stage of a startup you're very much firing from the hip constantly yeah, yeah. you're just, just, you know, like you're just going for it yeah. you know we're we're at a stage now, especially with this next round of funding coming into play, where it'll be taken very much to the next level. Yeah. So you're busy like raising money. Oh now. yes, correct. Yeah. But until we can't really start actively raising until this update's done. That so you've got stories. So you do your update. Yeah. And then you can exactly. Are you going to do that on the crowdfunding as well? No, we're going to just go privately. So VCs. Not or? VCs, just angels. Okay. Yeah, I think we'll probably. We thought about going out for about the 800 mark, but we'd have to 
you know, sell about with where we're at in terms of valuation, we'd have to sell about 30, 40% of the company. Um, so we're going to go out for a smaller amount, about 150, 200, and nice. actually sell less, less of the company. Fine, Makes fine. sense. And that gives you more runway for another yeah, uh, yeah. Like oh, six months? More, or more, more. Oh, more okay, fine. Sort of year to 18 months. But oh, at that's that good, point, that's the focus of this round is actually monetization really in the app. So Fine. So and then. how will you start to yes. monetize? Three ways of monetizing. So we've got premium features in the app, just things that add-ons that you yeah. can you can buy um, that sort of not increase your chance kind of increase your chances really yeah that's the idea so more visibility yeah exactly that kind of thing visibility but also amount of you get five nudges per day unlimited on premium next one in the story feed we will have ads sometimes popping yeah. up um, and then hyper local deals of businesses like a bar being able to push oh, nice. two for one on cocktails and they're also featured as a suggested date spot yeah, yeah. so they're the three main revenue streams um, awesome. of what we're looking at but it's easy it's easier said than actually done <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are, this is this is what we want but actually but you know, it's great to see people doing their own thing yeah i mean it's great yeah it's very, very easy just to like become an employee yes correct and, and that's the one thing i've luckily never you know had to do i've not been an employee before um, and it, it just doesn't suit. I'm quite. I like to think that I'm quite a creative out there uh, entrepreneur now. I found myself as an entrepreneur. Yeah. I can't work for someone else. I just couldn't do it. Um, but hey, touch wood. I don't have to. No, hopefully not. <laughs> do you do? Um, do you have any mentors? Um, yes, I do. Like anyone got... you chat to about business and. Um, like... I do. My chairman is kind of my mentor. Oh, One cool. of my investors is a mentor who's nice. a motivational speaker called Jim Lawless. That gives me lots of uh, advice. Um, okay. He's a, he talks, really interesting guy actually. He's all about uh, taming, so he's, he's built this framework um, that is about taming the tiger inside you. So when right. someone says, you got to go do this, or have you thought about learning to play the piano? There's always a tiger inside you that says, no, 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 I can't do that. It's a framework that helps you overcome that fear. Really nice. interesting. Nice. Um, so he's a, he's a good guy that I talk to pretty often. It's about it, really. It's good. Mindset's the most important. Yeah, have you got any mentors right? for I've you? Had, yeah, I've had um, a few over the years. After uni, I set up um, a fashion distribution mm-hmm. company. Then I was an employee. Then I mm-hmm. set up this mm-hmm. 10 years ago, nine mm-hmm. and a half years ago. And over the years, I've had lots of different mentors. Yeah. And there have been a mixture of people. They could have been um, like clients that mm-hmm. I regarded highly. Mm-hmm. I've got three advisors now for nice. my uh, executive search firm. I meet once a quarter. Yeah. It's quite nice to, because you get so like caught up in your business. Yes. Um, but it's nice just to step away mm-hmm. and like, it's mm-hmm. like classic, but work on the business mm-hmm. rather than just mm-hmm. in the business. Yeah. With people that aren't involved in my industry or, yes, or stuff. Yeah, yeah. And they're so just like. For a question for you for having your own business, yeah. do you find that it is just constantly on your mind? Uh, but I love it. Yeah, I know, I'm the same, but. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it, so it's just, you know, it's just always there. In the fact, you're just constantly thinking about it. The thing with, the thing with running your own business is, yeah. it, I mean, it's, your, it's ultimately your life. Yes. And, and it's 24 7. Yeah. And you have to find if you enjoy it mm-hmm. it doesn't feel like work mm-hmm. so but you have to do things so I do a lot of um, like exercises really great for my mind mm-hmm. so I'm doing like a lot of running mm-hmm. I do crossfit yeah. I do yoga nice um, you know when you're like lifting weights in the gym you're not thinking about yeah. anything else apart from I don't want to lift this <laughs> weight up again, <laughs> yeah of course or, this is something I need to get better at you know so like yeah. I've you have to like and also I diarise it Okay. Because you can get, say, like, I mean, everyone says it, right? You meet people, I'm so busy, I can't, yeah. haven't got time for yeah. this. I'm, we've all got 24 hours in a day. Yeah. And you only really need to do half an hour. It's yeah. half an hour out of 24 hours. Yeah. If you can fit that in. And, and it's just brilliant for your mindset. Yeah. And you totally. feel better. And so I am thinking about it all the time. Mm-hmm. But with these things, um, I never really get stressed. Mm-hmm. My mood is usually pretty well, it's stable. Yeah. You kind of like, once you know what game you're playing, you never. Like there's ups and downs and everything. Yeah. You know, like with you, you're going to be raising money and then yeah. it's high and you're raising money. Yeah. And, you know, it's just like, that's I, the game you're in. You totally. know, with, tar- with tech startups, it's like one round to another round it, to another yeah. round. And it's going to get stressful. It and, is, But yeah. it's fun and it's exciting. But that's, it's that's what we've chosen it's to play. It's a high risk game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's cool. You've got to like, just roll with it. And yeah. And I think also as well, um, with, yes, there's a, a, a great business opportunity here for what we're doing, but in terms of my own personal story as well, I'm on a bit of a venture because it all started as a bit of a project with me and my co-founder to actually find a girlfriend. <laughs> so there's kind of a bit of a bigger picture, which is quite <laughs> exciting to be like, look, it's not work, it's personal. But they always say, never mix 
pleasure and work. Yeah. But you know, the funny thing is, you'll probably end up finding your girlfriend in real life. I know. App. Oh, I know. And like I just, I, you know, at a bar. I couldn't like, think of anything hey, worse than finding my, my wife on a dating app. <laughs> <laughs> well, how awful. <laughs> but plenty of people no, have. I have. Oh, unlucky to them. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I should not be saying that on a podcast when I have a dating app. That's great. Do you know, it's because, uh, you know, talking about, like, thinking about work all the time. Yeah. You know, like, so when do you get to get to, how do you meet people? And, you know, so yeah. it's, it's actually really important because if you are working hard and mm-hmm. a lot of people do work mm-hmm. hard, it's they difficult. haven't got time to rock exactly. down to a bar. Yeah. Not everyone but has the confidence yeah, to... Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing in terms of confidence. It's, it's difficult to, you know, it's easy just to be like, oh, we're going to go into a bar with a few friends. And we're going to get chatting to some women, which just doesn't really happen that way. It's hard. You so can be the most confident that in, person, yeah, but I, know. I mean... You see that in the films. It's You're very difficult you know, she to do. Might have a boyfriend. I know, I know. Might, you know, so so I think the apps are, are, are great Thank to you. connect people. Yeah, exactly. And then, but the thing, the de- the most important thing is just this like face to face thing, because mm-hmm. people the problem with technology I find is people hide behind these things, yeah. right? So if you're chatting to someone on a dating app, there'd be every excuse not to meet them. Yeah. Um, well, it's people get are very witty and they're quite funny on the chats. And Hinge have got this really cool thing called prompts where everyone thinks of a really good answer um, in uh, oh, to put Hinge. on their profile. Uh, and they do a great job, by, by the way. Fair play to them. Um, what happens if you're better in person? I mean, I think, you know. Uh, yeah, true. <laughs> it's an opportunity. Yeah. Someone just wants an opportunity to meet someone and yeah. they might get on really well. Yeah. So, yeah, I think this micro-dating is, I th- is cool. I just think it's a more of efficient way. And dating within reason, for the right reasons, is a numbers game. You know, to find someone that you really click with and you also put the, the right amount of time into it to, to give it a chance. But it is, it, it's just in a more efficient way. You know, if you meet someone every three months on a Hinge date or a Tinder date or even in person, you know, or you could meet 10 people in three months, the chance of you finding someone that you really, really like is higher through actually going on short to sharp date more often. True. Then just people need to give people the chance. That's the only thing. I, I see your point and it's good good to challenge that. Yeah, yeah. But... Like, like meet someone in a, honey, in a honey pot. Yeah. You get on with them. Yeah. But then see them again. Yeah. See them again. Yeah. Give someone a chance. If yeah. they're not right, fine, you get yeah. back in. But my thinking is, you know, we are, you do know, I'm talking about initial spark. The initial spark has got to be there for sure. Exactly. Which does happen where people, they might go on a date every three months. They go on that, that first date and there is no spark. And, but then because it's very difficult to actually line up a date, they go, all right, this will do. <laughs> 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 you've got one life no, you I know you got do. One. no but do yeah, you know do you know life. what I mean it's, yeah, 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 it's yeah. trying to yeah. get people to to be more open to just meeting more people just yeah, meeting yeah. more people and that's yeah. why we'll eventually move to becoming more social in terms of friends meeting friends also biz, business connections I was at the XL actually on uh, Tuesday um, and I put one on the conference around the XL just a honeypot just drew it on it Oh, and in nice. my talk I said right there's a honeypot in this place I had loads of people using it it was really cool really yeah but it was for dating obviously but I wanted it to be for like business so like connections business meet yeah. Thing. yeah yeah oh it's great so awesome well it made great to chat to you yeah glad to you. see yeah. uh, it's going well yeah, keep going. up the good work thank you very much how can people get in touch and um, find out and grab? Instagram we've, the Instagram handle is honeypot.dating yeah and the app is called honeypot perfect <laughs> so and that, it's on app store and, and android yes yeah, yeah. yes correct right. cool Brilliant. thank you very much for having me pleasure those. thanks for coming in thank you hey folks thanks for listening don't forget to subscribe in all the usual places 